Hello? Hey, where are you? We have showtime in like an hour. I'm getting my hair cut, but don't worry, I'll make it on time. Well, hurry up. I don't think Lindsay saw from the health science class is gonna wait, is she? And neither will Adam's history lesson. It's okay, I'll make it on time, I promise. <gasps> Every time. Hello, and welcome to Accidentally Live. Why are you always running late? I was getting a haircut, I told you that. And maybe I was playing with my Power Rangers. Who plays with Power Rangers anymore? <laughs> hey, don't judge me. I was just getting ready for the new Power, Power Rangers movie coming out this week. Oh, that's really weird. Anyways, let's take a look at this week's entertainment segment, The Scope. None of us really know each other. We're all screw-ups. But somehow... We were all in the same place at the same time when Billy found those coins. For films this week, the new reboot of Power Rangers comes out to theaters today. It's a story about five teenagers who are brought together to become Power Rangers and to stop witch Rita Repulsa and her army of stone golems. This film has everyone excited and will surely be on the watch list for many this week to come. Savior. Monster. Guardian. Vigilante. In games, the long-awaited sequel to Injustice, Injustice 2, is on the horizon. Featuring the biggest roster of DC characters yet, the game will have a gear system that allows you to change both the looks and playstyles of your favorite superheroes. Injustice 2 is set to come out May 16th of this year. On music this week, Ed Sheeran's Shape of You has fallen to second place on the U.S. charts, with Marion Hill's new song Down taking the top spot for this week. I can't wait for that movie to come out. Yeah, we can tell. Who's your favorite one, though? I, mean, I really like the yellow one. He's all strong and manly. He really, he really shows everyone who's boss and a real man's man, like almost like a soldier. Ah, uh, you uh, realize that the yellow one is a girl, right? Oh, well, girls can still be strong soldiers, too. Well, speaking of soldiers, Adam has a very interesting history lesson for us today on today's History Lessons with Adam. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. Welcome back to History Lessons with Adam. I'm Adam. I'm totally not reading my notes from this book. So, let me ask you this. What do you do when emus are causing problems for farmers in your country? Well, you could do what Australia did and declare war on emus. Yes, today we're going to be talking about the Great Emu War. Why would a country declare war on emus, you ask? Well, if you were listening to my poorly written intro, you'd know. You don't listen to me. So, as many as like 20,000 emus came into the country, and according to the Australian government, that's too many emus. So, they did what any other country would do. They declared war on them. And so began the Great Emu War between the Royal Australian Artillery and Emus. On November 2nd, men traveled to Campion, where some 50 Emus were sighted. The men aimed their military-issued machine guns and killed about like 12 Emus. And there were a few more extra, there were a few more attempts. Somebody tried to mount a machine gun on a truck, which didn't work out well because Emus can run faster than a truck, and trying to shoot from a truck makes it, your aim really crappy. So the declared Wemu of the <laughs> the declared winner of this actual war was Emus. If you look it up, if you look this up on Wikipedia, the declared winner is Emus. The farmers asked for help from the government three different times and were denied. I'm Adam Thomas. Thank you for joining me. So there was an actual war on Emus. What's the deal with that? I don't know, but there are actual, actual injuries. Like, can you believe that? Well, I guess injuries brings us to our class video about the health science class here at Tech. Quit stuttering. Why do I... 
<laughs> Whoa, where am I? Calm down, you're in the hospital. You had a really bad accident. Oh, hey, I'm in health sciences, one of my favorite classes. You know, this class allows you to work with real-time equipment in a professional lab setting. We'll learn more from this. How long have I got? One minute. I'm in the health science technology program. The program is like a foundational course, so you get all of your anatomy, all your medical terminology, all the things you need to know to like put you forward to next year. My favorite activity that we've done so far was learning how to remove people from beds. The CTSO for Health Science is HOSA, where you get to go to events like next week we're going to a leadership conference in Norman. From my program you get um, your CPR certification and you get your CNA. With what you learn from tech, you can get, you can really go into anything. You can go into nursing, uh, you can be a doctor, you can be an occupational physical therapist. It's just really whatever you want to do. That class looks sick. Coming from the health science class, we have Island Hammer. Thank you for joining us, Island. So, Island, why did you choose this class? Um, I chose to take this class to better myself in sports medicine. Uh, what do you think this job can, uh, or what do you think taking tech is going to help uh, get like in the field? Um, this class uh, brings me contacts into the field. Uh, what's the most interesting thing you've learned? I'd probably say veins and how far they go and how much they're bunched up in your body. Well, every week we have a game for our special guest, and uh, since she's our special guest, we're going to play um, Never Have I Ever. So what we'll do is we'll put up three fingers, and we'll say something that we have not done ourselves. And if you have done it, then you put your finger down, and so on until the game you know, ends. So I'll start. Um, I have never been in health science class. I have never driven motocross. <laughs> I have never had an older sibling. I've never broken a bone. Okay. I have never been in a band. Okay. Well, thanks for coming to us today. And we're going to take a quick commercial break to Alyssa's Recycling PSA. A single wad of paper. It's so small it could barely leave an impact on the environment. So it's fine to throw it out into the field, right? I mean, after all, it's just one piece. But like most small things, they tend to add up. And that little piece of paper turns into a big environmental problem. Littering builds up. Don't add to the pile. Before our break, we were talking with one of our health science students. Yeah, I didn't know that there was such a cool class here at Tech. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff here at Tech. Did you hear about the wildcat plane in the hangar? No, I didn't. Let's take a look at it. Um, the aircraft itself uh, was built in 1942. The plane originally belonged to um, our organization um, based in Frederick. It was bought in 2007 and it costs $95,000. We are currently working here three days a week in general, um, on a Tuesday, on a Thursday and a Saturday morning. We hope to have it finished as soon as possible. Uh, we've had some setbacks with some um, and mechanical faults that we found, but we hope it to be up and flying by the spring of this year. The 
the plane, as when it's up and running, we will be taking it to Frederick uh, to operate um, a jump school. I started working with the organisation in 2002 and uh, the reason that I joined was because I believed in the goals of the organisation which was to remember and honour veterans of World War II in particular. That was a really cool interview. I didn't know that there was so much history behind that plane. Yeah, I didn't either. Well guys, thanks for joining us this week. Next week we're going to be talking about some fire monkeys in Adam's new history lesson, learn how much Beauty and the Beast movie made, and an interesting interview with a multimedia design student. See, See you next, next week, week on Accidentally, Accidentally Live. Live. Storm.